How do you keep your one chord groove solos fresh and inspiring? How do we play a one chord groove and keep it exciting? In this video, I'll work with different funky solo strategies from simple to advanced. One of the most simple things there is, is to play with great timing and stay in the groove. Remember to dig deep and keep this in your playing at all times. This is really important. Throughout the whole video, I'll keep giving small scales, small chords, small solo examples and small exercises how you can practice this. So stay tuned all the way. Here's the first link, 10 ways to improve your timing. Hi there, I'm Søren Bellegård and welcome to Søren Bellegård's saxophone lessons. Let's start with a pentatonic scale. What notes does the pentatonic scale consist of? Well, the G minor pentatonic scale fits the G minor 7 chord like this. All the chord notes of the G minor 7 chord are represented in the G minor pentatonic scale. Except the C, what's up with that? The fourth or the 11th. A bit of music theory about this. Why does the C fit the G minor 7 chord? The C is not a leading tone towards any of the notes that surrounds it. It's a steady note because we have a whole step towards the D above the C and the B flat below the C. C to D, whole step, C to B flat, whole step. This is why it's a great note to use over the G minor chord. It doesn't really lead anywhere. It's kind of neutral, but still gives a nice color. When we have a G minor funky groove, we can play a little bit of solo with the G minor pentatonic scale over the G minor chord. What I really often hear is a lot of build up in funk solo. So what kind of building bricks do we have? Start around the root, lead towards the root, but just stay around the root. Use a lot of space. In this clip, Candy Dolph is not exactly staying within the pentatonic scale, but you get the drift. The basics are surrounding a couple of target notes you have chosen. In our example we have G as a center. Use space and play around the G E flat and the F are surrounding and leading towards that G. The key is build up, expanding to the full pentatonic scale. We do not really change our strategy. We still want to lead towards this G. Keep playing the root, keep playing that B flat above and that F below. You can change octave if you want, but keep it slow and simple in the beginning. Now, the next level is using more scale. Use more of the pentatonic scale. To get the solo to sound very natural, I keep a two or four bar period. This means I tend to start on the root or in the neighborhood of the root, move away from the root and after two to four bars I come back to the root to kind of state 
this is where I am. Check the links in the description of much more interesting knowledge on the pentatonic scales. Repeating patterns in the pentatonic scale. Repeating patterns is something our ears and our brains really like. For example, like this, having just two notes moving upwards. Try playing around with a rhythmic pattern like this. You can basically take any group of notes, move them rhythmically around. If it's a group of notes that you keep steady by four, two up, two down, three up, three down, one up, two down, you know, kind of like that. Add bigger jumps to make the solo more interesting. Boom. Stepping up add-ons. But remember, the basic rule still applies. You need to get home after two to four bars. Make sure you know where you are. Make sure you fit those two to four bars period feel in there. I keep playing towards the tonal center. I keep adding these target notes and aiming for these using the surrounding notes toward these notes. I want to give you a tip from one of my earlier videos. Three great melodic tools to develop strong melodies. Check it in the description. The Dorian scale extension. Most of the modal minor Dorian groove music I have played uses the Dorian scale with the raised sixth. In short, this is an F major key, but played from the second degree of the F major, from the G. So what are the extras we get from the Dorian scale compared to the pentatonic scale? The notes that are extra in the Dorian scale are the A, the ninth, and the E, the 13th. Try adding these to your solo. So we practice the pentatonic scale. Now add the E and the A. So the 9 and the 13th to this. And you get this Dorian scale. You get much more jazz sound, the much more scale like sound. Start, for example, by playing up to one of these notes. Or start on one of these notes. See what the sound does to you. <laughs> This sound from the famous Miles Davis tune, so what? And try using them so in your solo. Leading tone. So the E leading down to the D. Or the A leading down to the G. This fits really, really nicely in the G minor 7 chord. And adding these notes to the mix, we get a lot more possibilities to sound a little bit outside. Compared to the pentatonic scale, which sounds very much inside, these two notes sound a little bit so, wow, spacey. Chords in the scale. Start with the triads. <laughs> Make simple lines using the diatonic triads here and there. And as before, start simple. Make a couple of patterns where you move up and down the scale with the triads. If you're looking for a very, very super hip sound, it's very easy. B flat major triad. If you add more major triads, you get even super hip plus plus plus. A little fun lick I use a lot in my playing when I play funk solos is this. It's also an exercise, but it works really well as a lick and exercise. So try this out, 
in your Dorian scale. Basically, I'm playing inversions of the triads down the horn. Adding your four and five note chords to the mix gets you a more jazzy feel. <laughs> Another great lick and exercise of mine is moving down the four note chords in 16 notes and a triplet. Practice this as a lick, but also practice this as an exercise going down the scales. What I do when we add these other chords, you move away from our tonal center, which is the G minor chord. You basically create tension, but it's not a heavy tension. It's just outside the chord, going back to the chord. It's important you show that you're coming back to this tonal center. Other add-ons could be using the blues scale. This is a G minor blues scale. Or you can use the G minor 6 blues scale. This gives you this E, the 13th, with the blues scale. It's a very nice mix. Here's another tip if you want to know more about the blues scale. Check the video I make the best thing about the blues and how to use it. Another really really great thing that actually fits with the five note chord or the scale is adding the leading tone of the dominant, the F sharp. So adding that F sharp as a leading tone, but then it gets very jazzy and in a funk setting you don't want to sound that jazzy. Just a little bit, but the F sharp will do the trick for you. And here's another tip, play amazing bebop lines like this. So check all the links in the description below. There are so many ways to add on to the build up in your groove solos. The main thing is to be creative around what you're doing and take it really slow. Learn each method well before you move on to the next. Let me know what funk, soul and pop grooves you really dig and post it in the comments below. I would really like to hear from you about this. Who is your favorite funk saxophone player? And as always, if you have questions, post it in the comments below. If you want to hear more about these lessons, about saxophone, about practicing, about me, about the music, how I play music, hit the subscribe button and you won't regret. Your support, likes, subscribes, comments are really, really appreciated. All links mentioned in this video are in the description below. Play music and have fun.